Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show that rewards obscure answers rather than the obvious ones. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Rachel and this is my boyfriend Paul and we're from Epsom in Surrey. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Sam, this is my partner Rob and we're from Newport in South Wales. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Adam, this is my girlfriend Ellie and we live in Altrincham. And finally, couple number four. Hi, uh, we're Petra and Sophia, mother and daughter from Surrey. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Aging like a fine wine gum. It's my pointless <laughs> friend. It's Richard. Hi, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, hello there. Hello. Now, since we started having people back three times, yes. which I rather like, by the way, because it gives it familiarity it. and that sort of stuff, but this is about as inexperienced a lineup as it's mathematically possible to have. So we've got three new couples, and Petra and Sophia are on the end there, who got, got through to round one last time. So, we barely uh, know them. Barely yeah, know them. How about that? I know. Um, now, in the last show, Harry and Lizzie got through to the final, did very well all the way through, and Harry asked us for a sport question. And we gave him a sport question, not because he asked. That's not how it works. But he was lucky enough to have a sport question. However, his first two answers, incorrect, incorrect. And I wonder if you can tell us what happened with this third answer. Oh, the third answer. Incorrect. They didn't win the jackpot, so we're adding another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,500. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. Just remember, at all times, it is the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so keep your scores low and you will be great. Best of luck, everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Food production. That's fun. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... Top tomato producing countries as they could. Top tomatoes. What a way to introduce everyone to a yeah. new show. Goodness me. We're looking for any of the top 50 tomato producing countries in the world, please. So, any country in the top 50 uh, tomato producers. The latest figures are from uh, June 2020 from the United oh, Nations. Oh, those are up to date. But it's 50. That's a lot of countries. That's about a quarter of the countries of the world. Yeah. You know? Hmm. Rachel. Mm. Mm. Rachel, welcome. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, so, I'm from Epsom in Surrey and I'm an actuary, so I work in pensions. Right. Are you originally from Wales? Yes. So, originally... <laughs> oh, my. How do you do that? I don't know. It's a weird skill. I, I can just tell. It's amazing. Amazing skill. Um, sorry, you were saying... Sorry, I interrupted you there, Rachel. Very what do you do for fun, Rachel? Uh, so, fun, uh, quite into geocaching. Um, so, me and Paul were avid geocachers, so go out most weekends doing that. So when you head out geocaching, with your, you have your phone with you, what's the aim? You want to get as many things as you can or do you tend to just go after one particular thing? Uh, it depends, really. So qu quite often they're in, like, a big route around, say, right. like a country walk in a forest or something. Oh, I see. And there may be, like, 20 on the route. So we'll go out and then do one after each other I and see. then back to the car. But do you yeah. just put your phone through that Th GPS that's his position? Job. So he's there, yeah, okay. doing that. right. And can you leave messages for the next person? Yes. So you, you write your name on the log and then you, you also um, write a little note there on the app. I've learned something. There we are. Thank you very much. Now, Rachel, tomatoes. Top 50 tomato-producing countries. Where do we start? It's going to be a little bit of a guess. Uh, I'm going to go for Portugal. Portugal, says Rachel. Let's find out if Portugal's right. How many of our 100 people said Portugal? Portugal's right. Very well done indeed, Rachel. What a great start. 34 yeah. for Portugal. Yeah, we'll take yeah. that, I think. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they produce over a million tonnes a year, uh, the Portuguese. 17th uh, on that list. I don't need to tell you, but the, the current president of the Mediterranean International Association of the Processing Tomato is from Portugal. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Rob, welcome to Point. It's lovely to have no. you here. Tell us all about yourself, Rob. Um, my name's Rob. I'm 34, I forget. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I, I, 27. Yeah. I just go by 27. It's what I say all the time. 27. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. Tell me more about yourself. Rob. Um, last year, I delivered our baby on the bathroom floor. <gasps> it's his favourite story. <laughs> oh, Rob, tell us your favourite story again. <laughs> I might sit down cross legged while you tell it. Um, tell us. So, um, I was in work. The water's broke in the morning. We went to the hospital. 
they said, you know, come back in a few hours. What, you thought, what, your spine. waters are broken? They said, come back. Oh, it's three probably times. just, it's probably just Braxton said, come Hicks. come back. Yeah, yeah, three times. Did no. I say two things? <laughs> come back in a bit. Also, have you ever lived in Wales? Yeah. That's what they said. <laughs> yeah. Half yes. an hour drive to the hospital yeah. as well. Half we'll just an hour. Yeah. And all the while you're going, um, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm having a baby. I'll just go home again. It's OK. So we um, got back the third time, and within about an hour, she was... Going. Going. So up in the bathroom, got on the phone to the 999, and, yeah, within Bosh. half hour, the baby was there. Bosh, as I believe the midwife Bosh. says. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's lovely. That's really... What an amazing and special thing to be doing. Yeah. Um, OK, Rob. What are we going to go for? Tomatoes. Um, after watching plenty of cooking shows and things like that, I'm just going to take a guess at Mexico. I've seen plenty of people cooking with tomatoes in Mexico, so Mexico. Nice thinking. Let's see. Mexico, is it right? It is right. Mm. 34 is what Portugal scored. Mexico passes it. Down to 15. Very well done indeed, Rob. Very well played. Four and a half million tonnes from Mexico. It's a ninth on the list. Oh, a lot yeah. of tomatoes. Oh, a lot of tomato. And they make a tortilla soup, which is like a comfort food in Mexico, which is made, made from tomatoes. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Adam, welcome. Nice to meet you. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Adam. Uh, I'm 24. I've just finished my master's degree. And I'm a, well done. And I'm a part-time rugby league referee. I, well done. <laughs> that's exciting, and that's exciting. Um, well, what was the master's in? Uh, strength and conditioning at John Moore's. Strength Moore and conditioning? Liverpool. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, all I can think of is, is, is hair, is shampoo. But um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's fantastic. Um, and the, the refereeing, might you go full-time? Uh, I'd love to one day. Uh, just have to wait and see OK, you have to happens. serve your apprenticeship. Uh, to you yeah, as progress as okay. the years go on and oh. see what happens. Strength and conditioning, though. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, Adam, what are you going to go for? Uh, I'm just going to take a guess and say Spain. Spain. I mean, if Portugal, surely Spain. Let's see. Spain? Spain. Spain. Spain 86. <laughs> OK, I reckon we'll get a chance to chat more about strength and conditioning. <laughs> we may well do, yeah. Spain, they're the eighth most in the world. Originally, Europeans didn't really take to tomatoes because they resemble uh, the belladonna plant, which is very, very poisonous. Oh, yes. But we, yes. we seem to have... Uh, we seem to have I don't really it. like tomatoes. There we go. Not for everyone. Petra, welcome back. Remind us all about yourself. Tell us more, Petra. Uh, retired, um, live in Surrey, and I like to take out our little dog on lots of walks and meet friends. And that's that's very lovely. So, what yes. kind of little dog have you got? It's a bit of a mixture. It's a lovely. confused dog. It's a sort of Chihuahua Lapa Absu Bichon, so it's a bit crazy. <laughs> wow. wow, that must have been some party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, lots of character. Um, Petra, what are you going to go for? Uh, well, I'm thinking Mediterranean, so I'm going to go for Greece. Greece, says Petra. Why not? Greece. Let's see how many of our 100 said Greece. Greece is right. Well, 86 was our high score. 15 is our low. Oh, 21 for Greece. Very well done indeed. Uh, yeah, 25th in the world. In fact, uh, again, I don't need to tell you this, but the uh, the 2018 World Processing Tomato Congress mm. was held, held in Greece, Greece. Yes, which I, I think I is I'm... indicative of their importance in the uh, tomato-producing yeah. uh, industries. Yeah. I will say, by the way, there are lots and lots of very, very low scorers on this list. I recognise why we're not risking that, but... Uh, I see. Just yes. so you know, there are, yeah. there are, there are plenty I of... I would imagine there are probably answers. some pointless answers. There are there. lots and some, lots some... of... If, yeah. you'll, if you'll forgive me, some low-hanging fruit in this, in this round. How do you mean? No. <laughs> some low-hanging fruit. What do you mean? <laughs> some, uh, some... Yeah, OK, it's fine. <sighs> OK, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at the scores, though. Uh, 15, best score of the past, Rob. Very well done indeed. Rob and Sam looking very strong on the back of that. Then we travel up to 21, where we find Petra and Sophia. Then up to 34, we find Rachel and Paul. And then up to 86, quite a long way up to 86, where we find Adam and Ellie. So, Ellie, oh, if you could find one of those low-hanging etc., that would be amazing in the next pass. So, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Sophia, welcome Hi. back. <laughs> Tell us more about yourself. Um, so, obviously, I um, coach a lot of tennis, but I also like to do a lot of horse riding. So, um, any days off I get, um, 
out in the countryside, basically. Straight on the horse. Yeah, <laughs> pretty Straight much. on the... Now, when you coach tennis, do you, do you coach at a tennis place or do you go to people's houses and coach um, there? No, it's at a club. At a club? So, through, yeah. A okay, club, that's the word. Not a tennis place. <laughs> They're not called tennis places. Tennis club. <laughs> tennis club. There we are. Uh, now, Sophia, you're on 21. Great yeah. score from Petra in the first mm. pass, which means 64 or less gets you into yeah. round two. Um, I think I'll take a risk. Sorry. <laughs> I think I'll go for Morocco. Morocco. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Morocco. There's your red line. It's right. You're into round two, but let's see where we end up with Morocco. Oh, very good indeed. Eight, taking your total up to 29. Yeah, 15th on the list, Morocco. Very well done. Nice uh, risk to go for. They're very sweet tomatoes in Morocco. That's nice to know. Mm. Mm. Um, Ellie. Now then, Ellie, welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I grew up in Buckinghamshire, but I now live in Altrincham and I'm a compliance administrator. Where do you do your administrating of compliance? Um, well, I'm working from home at the moment, right. um, but I work for a company that installs boilers. <laughs> Very good indeed. Someone was talking to me about the other day about WFH, and I thought they were being rude. I was at work from home. Yeah, work from uh, home. So I'm WFH. I was going, all right, oh, yeah. okay, all right, steady. W working from home. Yeah, so there we are. Clever. Uh, Ellie, you're on 86, you're our high scorers. What are you going to go for? Um, I was kind of tossing it up between two, um, but I think I'll just go for the first one that I thought of. Um, which is Venezuela. Venezuela, says Ellie. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Venezuela. No red line. You're the high scorers. Oh, bad luck, Ellie, I'm afraid. Not Venezuela. That scores you 100 points. Takes your total up to 186. Sorry, Ellie, you had to go for a big, risky one. But, uh, yeah, a good, listen, a good risk to take. I know it's wrong, but, uh, you know, you had, you had to have a go. OK. Now then, Sam, Hello. welcome to the show. Lovely Hi. to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Sam. Well, I've just gone back to work after my maternity leave with my lovely daughter. So can I just say hello to my lovely children? You just certainly very can. Say hello. So, hello to my lovely Illy and hello to my lovely Dylan. Illy and Dylan. Illy and Dylan. Illy and Dylan. She'll and... love that because Dougie is her best thing in the whole world. So as soon oh. as she hears you, she'll be over the moon. Oh, so that's she'll love wonderful. That. Whoa, woof. Yeah, thank there we you. Are. Good, <laughs> good, good, good. Illy. Thank you. There we are. And it was Illy that, that you delivered, Ross. It Ross's. was indeed, oh, yes. Very good. Does Illy have a name that, that means one delivered by bearded father? No, it doesn't. Oh. It could. I mean, he made it up, kind of, so we could say that is what it means. Lovely. <laughs> it means good delivery. It does. There it we does. Uh, Sam, you are on 15. It does not matter what you score. Um, you're through to the next round, is what I mean. Seeing as it doesn't, I am going to do a risky one. Good. My other Let's get some pointless gone. answers I in. can come back, so we're going to go risky. I'm going to say Japan. Japan. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love you, Sam. You're brilliant. Japan. This is exactly the kind of. This is what we needed. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Japan. No red line. You're already through. It's right. Yes. Down it goes to six. Very, very well done, oh. India. I was hoping that might be pointless, but there we yeah, are. Six is still good. <laughs> 21 is your total. Uh, yep. 724,000 tonnes the Japanese produce. It's a lot of tomatoes, That's right? a lot of tomatoes. Mm. Paul, welcome. Good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm 37 and I'm currently volunteering. Are you volunteering at what? Yes. Uh, so it depends on the groups, really. You have groups which can be walking groups or you can have art groups. That's very lovely. Are these for kids or is it for people of all ages? Uh, it could be a mixture from kids up, uh, from 16 upwards. Good for you, Paul. Um, now, you are also through to the next round. Doesn't matter what you score. Lovely score from yeah. Rachel in the first pass. Very high score from Ellie and Adam, a combination of the two. What are you going to go for? Bearing in mind, you could say anything and still yeah. go through. Let's see if we can get some money in the jar. I've, I've got a few in my mind, but I'm just not sure which one to go for. Um, oh. Kind of thinking Mediterranean, so maybe um, Croatia. Croatia, OK. Let's see, how many of our 100 people said Croatia? Is it right? Oh, oh well, this way. Nothing lost. Nothing lost there. Scored you 100 points, takes your total up to 134. Yeah, absolutely worth a go. Now, there's loads of pointless answers. I'll go through the low scorers first. You've got four for Chile and Russia. Russia are on that list. You've got three for Poland and Romania. Two for Cuba, Pakistan and Tunisia. One for Algeria, Cameroon, Guatemala, 
Iran, I always say Iran for these questions because it's always high up in all of them. One for Israel, one for Kenya, Ukraine and Uzbekistan. And now some pointless answers for you. You could have said Azerbaijan, uh, which is also always a good answer for these things. Uh, Bangladesh, Jordan. There's Malawi, Mozambique, South Korea. Sudan, Tajikistan, Tanzania, also Kazakhstan, which is always a good answer in these rounds as well, uh, Syria and Turkmenistan, the top five tomato-producing countries in the world, none of which we've had. Number five, Egypt. Of course. Number four, Turkey. Mm -hmm. Number three, USA. Number two, India. Number one, China. There, there we you are. go, most Thank tomatoes you. in the world, China. Thank you. How many hundreds of thousands of tonnes? Uh, 61 million tonnes. Yeah. The Chinese produce every year. That's what enough. Scored you, what has scored you 15 points, China? There we go. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our first round. Our interesting, I hope you'll agree, interesting tomato round. Um, it also means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. I'm so sorry. Ellie and Adam, you are our high scorers. We say goodbye now, but we'll see you again next time. Look forward to that very much. Meantime, thank you, Ellie and Adam. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. There we are, down to three pairs. Uh, very well done, everybody. We made it through the tomato round. Um, Sam, our best individual, our best individual. Thank I mean, you. that was brilliant. Thank Japan, you see, Japan. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Rob and Sam, in fact, our best combined scorers. So fantastic work on that middle podium. But well done, everybody. Love to have you here. Best of luck. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Prominent people. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... People with the initials PP, hence prominent people, I oh, guess. Oh, that question right is a clever, aren't oh, they? they're so clever. Yeah, absolutely. Prominent people, six on each board, all of whom's initials are PP. Excellent. Um, OK, let's reveal our board of clues. Six people with the initials PP. Actor who joined EastEnders in 1993, playing Bianca Jackson. Spanish artist and creator of the 1937 Cubist painting Weeping Woman. Blue Peter presenter between 1967 and 1978. Award-winning author of the 1958 children's book Tom's Midnight Garden. Naked gun actor who was married to rock and roll singer Elvis from 1967 to 1973. And Britain's Got Talent winner who recorded the hit 2007 album One Chance. There we are. Now then, Rachel. Hello. What are you going to go for on our PP board? OK, so I know a few of them. Just trying to decide which one. I think I'm going to go for the Britain's Got Talent one and say Paul Potts. Paul Potts, says Rachel. Let's see how many of our 100 people remembered Paul Potts. <laughs> Danny goes for 13. Not bad at all. Good start to the round. Well played, yeah. Won the very first series of uh, Britain's Got Talent way back in 2007. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Sam. Well, that was my answer, so I've got two. So I think I'll go for the Blue Peter presenter, I think, is Peter Purvis. Peter Purvis, says Sam. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Peter Purvis. Peter Purvis is absolutely right. And that goes down to 20. Not bad. Yeah, very much one of my uh, uh, Blue Peter presenters, Peter Purvis, because um, I was seven when he finished. Yeah, uh, mainly with John Noakes and Valerie Singleton. He was in Doctor Who before, uh, before he, he was really? a Blue Peter presenter. Yeah, he's one of the companions of William Hartnell. How funny, I didn't know that. Yeah. And he's been on the show several times. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Petra, this board's all yours. Do you want to talk us through the PPs? Right. Um, I know the top one, that's Patsy Palmer, I think. Um, I don't know if the second one's Paloma Picasso. I'm not sure. Um, I think I'm going to go for the Naked Gun um, actress. I'm going to go for Priscilla Presley. Priscilla Presley says Petra. Let's see how many of our 100 people got Priscilla Presley. It's right. 20's our high score, 13's our low. 39 for Priscilla Presley. Uh, well done, Petra. Your surname doesn't begin with P, does it? I had to think. <laughs> you must remember, surely. Imagine if that was one of the questions. Uh, let's fit in the rest of these, shall we? You are absolutely right about uh, Patsy Palmer. 
would have been a slightly better score, 33 for that. The Spanish artist... Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso would have scored you 18. Now, I felt like I knew this answer, yeah, but... Yeah, I but think it, I should know this. Yes, I feel like I should know it, but then I looked at the answer and realised yeah. I didn't. I was racking my brains. Philippa Pierce. Nah. Philippa Don't Pierce, know. one point. Very well done if you said that. Isn't that funny? That's one of those books you, yeah. you assume you know the author of. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Well, we're halfway through the round already. Let's have a look at those scores. 13, Rachel. Very well done. Uh, best score of the past. Then 20 is where we find Sam and Rob. Then 39 is where we find Petra and Sophia. So, Sophia, you get the new board. Try and find a nice obscure one on there. Good luck with that. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, six more people going up on the board, all of them with the initials PP. Here they come. Author of His Dark Materials book series, Roman governor of Judea, who, according to the New Testament Gospels, presided over the trial of Jesus, Italian mountain biker who won Olympic gold medals in 1996 and 2000, Essex MP appointed Home Secretary in July 2019, actor who played Elsie Tanner in Coronation Street, and French midfielder sold by Juventus to Manchester United in 2016 for a record £89 million. Pounds. There we go. So, Sophia. Um, I only know a couple of them, but I think I'm going to go for the Essex MP and say Pretty Patel. Pretty Patel says, Sophia, no red line for you as you're the high scorers. How many of our 100 said Pretty Patel? Pretty Patel is right. Down he goes to 17. Not bad at all, taking your total up to 56. Very well played, yeah. Born in London in 1972 to uh, Gujarati parents who fled Uganda in the 1960s. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, Rob, uh, you're on 20. We're looking for a score of 35 or less from you to keep you in the game. What are you going to go for? I prefer the last ball, I'm not going to lie. But um, I'm just going to hope you didn't ask anyone who knows anything about football. I have to say Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba, says Rob, here is your red line. Let's see if you can get below this with Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba is right. And you're in the head-to-head. Look at that, Rob. Very well done, indeed. 19 takes her total up to 39. Very well played, Rob. Yeah, that's sort of a usual score for a, a footballer. It's one of those ones. All football fans know Pogba, of course, but uh, non-football fans don't. Thank you very much, indeed, Richard. Now, Paul, you're on 13, which means 42 or less gets you into the head-to-head. -head. Do you want to talk us through the board? I would love to, but I have not got a clue. I should know some of them, but mine's gone blank. I can only hazard a guess at the top one. And Philip Pullman? Philip Pullman, says Paul. Well done, Rachel. That was very, <laughs> very dignified, <laughs> muted response there. Uh, there is your red line, Paul. Let's see if Philip Pullman can get you below that. Very well done. Through you go. Brilliant work. 23 takes your total up to 36. Very well played, Paul. Well worked out. Uh, does your surname begin with P? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Oh, God, I thought that... <laughs> Wouldn't it have been a brilliant end to the round if it had? I know. That would yeah, have been lovely. I would imagine the awards we'd have won if we'd have ended oh, that round with you going, do you know what? It does. <laughs> it does. Clung! Yeah. I'd like to thank BAFTA, <laughs> um, all the jury. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Rich. Come on. <laughs> Let's go oh. get drunk. We'd have loved that. Oh. Paul Powell. Anything. I don't mind. Whatever it was. Um, let's fill these in, shall we? The Roman governor of Judea. Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate. Would have scored you 32, the actor who played Elsie Tanner. Oh, I don't know. Pat Phoenix. Pat, Pat Phoenix, Phoenix oh, yep. Yeah. She would have scored you 30. Uh, I won't ask you about the uh, the mountain biker. Uh, she is Paola Pezzo. The p -p -p pointless answer as well. Ah, I see. Yeah. See, 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 see. Man. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of our second round. It means we have to say goodbye to another pair. Oh, I'm sorry, Sophia and Petra. This is where we say goodbye to you. You'll be back next time, though. Next time. It's round one last time. It's round two this time. I think head to head and maybe beyond next time. Uh, we look forward to that. Thank you so much, meanwhile, Sophia and Petra. But for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Rob and Sam, Paul and Rachel. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, look, we have an opportunity here to see if we could put up to £500 more pounds into that jackpot by finding a couple of pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many books by Jules Verne as they could. Uh, six titles of books uh, up on the board, four of them by Jules Verne, to which I'm pointing this. Two of them, though, uh, are ones that we've uh, put 
put in there as red herrings, but uh, which are the pointless answers. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our six potential Jules Verne books, and we have got The Green Ray, The Land That Time Forgot, Five Weeks in a Balloon, A Sunken Metropolis, The Fur Country, and 800 Leagues on the Amazon. There we are. If anyone knows anything, now is a good time to declare it, because it's great to pool your resources How here, because it's in everyone's Jules interest. How Verne knowledge, guys? I, I've never heard of him, but... Oh. But I've heard of the film, The Land the Time Forgot. That's the one I'm thinking as well. Mm. So I reckon right. The Land the Time Forgot is probably not pointless. Yeah. But any of the other I'm, ones I'm, could be. I'm thinking 100 Leagues on the Amazon is probably made up. Yeah. And I would probably go... Not for the fall, The third country is made up, but I don't know. We're like... going to go for... We're going to take a punt on a sunken metropolis. A sunken... Sunken metropolis. metropolis, say Sam and Rob. A sunken metropolis, let us find out if a sunken metropolis is a pointless Jules Verne book. No. Oh, oh I'm afraid not. Never mind. I'm afraid not. Paul and Rachel, let's see if we can get a pointless answer. Come on. I don't know. The fur country? Yeah. yeah. The fur country? The fur country. I mean, surely we wouldn't have made that up. The fur country. <laughs> Mm, has the ring of truth to me. Let's find out, is it a pointless Jules Verne book? Oh. It is a Jules Verne book. And it's... Oh, oh no, one. Oh. Sorry, I was just drawing breath to say, and it's pointless. I'm afraid it's not one person had heard of that. Oh, well, Maybe there we are. Uh, yeah, that's one of his novels in his Extraordinary Voyages um, series, The Fur Country. Now, let's take a look at a few of these. So, uh, Five Weeks in a Blue was actually the first of his Extraordinary Voyages series, and that would have scored oh, points. Now, of these other three, one of them is incorrect and two of them are pointless answers, so what do you reckon? I think 800 Leagues on the Amazon is, is not, is a made-up one. You think that's OK? Let's take a look. Is 800 Leagues on the Amazon made up? It's oh, no, it's a pointless answer. answer, I'm afraid. Do you want another go? No, what having after that? The Land That um, Time Forgot or The Green Ray. I think we've heard of The Land That Time Forgot, yeah. but maybe that must be the one, then. Sure. You think that's the pointless answer? I guess it is. Let's take a look. The Land That Time Forgot. Oh, oh no. It's by Edgar oh. Rice Burroughs. Oh, of course By it is. somebody else. I'm there so we sorry. Yeah. Um, we don't yeah. often do that, do we? So the other yeah. pointless answer is The Green Ray. So The Green Ray and 800 Leagues on the Amazon. Very well done if you said both of those. There we are. Well, listen, we didn't find any pointless answers, but then kind of nor did we either. So there we are. <laughs> and we just, we just had a bit of fun. There we are. Let's play the head-to-head. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you are now allowed to confer, which is nice. Here is the first question, and it is all about dogs in cars. <laughs> Richard. Yep, I'm going to show you five pictures now of dogs in cars. All you have to do is identify the cars, please. No, identify the dogs, please. We'll show you alternate letters of their names as well. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five dogs in cars. I hope with windows open. Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. Here they come. We've got A... E I G S <laughs> B R N H U L O C I H N R S D U L E R E and E A M T A There we are. So, Rob and Sam, you'll go first. You're our golden couple. Which one would you like to...? Well, whichever doesn't matter. Um, we, we, we think A is probably going to be the lowest score that we can. Can't think for, of what like, yes. think of what it is. So, we'll go for... Yeah, we'll go for D. Bull Terrier. D. Bull Terrier, say Rob and Sam. Now then, Paul and Rachel, it's over to you. So, I think B is French Bulldog. C is Bichon Freeze, D is Bull Terrier, E is Dalmatian, and I I don't know how this... Mm, I think I might know what it is, but I don't know how to spell it, so I'm not going to go for it. So I'm going to go for C, Bichon Freeze. OK, C, Bichon Freeze. So we have Bull Terrier and we have Bichon Freeze. Rob and Sam went for Bull Terrier for D. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Bull Terrier. Bull Terrier is right. And that takes us down to 56. <laughs> Meanwhile, Paul and Rachel have gone for Bichon Freeze for C. Let's see how many of our 100 people got Bichon Freeze. 
Is on freezes right, and it wins you the point. Very well done indeed. That done. goes down to 22, and it means Paul and Rachel after one question. You're up one nil. Well done. Um, now let's start at the back, shall we? E is Dalmatian. Dalmatian. Big old score though, 84. Which has scored 101. That would have been nice. Huh. Uh, they need two hours of exercise a day, Dalmatians. Whoa, I mean, a, really? That's a lot. If you, had right? a, if you had 101 of them. Oh, I mean, my, that's, that's 202 crazy. hours of, of uh, yeah. exercise a day. Yeah. Uh, B, we know, is... French Bulldog. French Bulldog. Would have scored you 52. Now, this is the one that people are having trouble with, maybe because of the spelling. So, Pekingese. That's it. Oh, oh it's that's a Pekingese. It. Yeah. Oh. It's a Pekingese. That's the coolest one, I 13, think, of all of them. That's a great that photo, presents isn't it? the best in a car setting. Yeah, doesn't it? Just say, very yes. beautifully framed in the car window yeah. there. 13 points for that as well. There we go. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. Now, Rob and Sam, you have to win this one to stay in the game. Paul and Rachel have it slightly in their favour because they, they get to answer first. Uh, good luck. Our second question is all about scientific O's, Richard. Yes, yeah, some sciencey questions here, uh, all of which have answers which begin with O. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five scientific clues and here they come. We have got an individual animal, plant or single-celled life form Eight, the SI unit of electrical resistance. Three, the collective name for the stapes, malleus and incus, the three small bones in the middle ear. Eight, abundant element which makes up 21% of the Earth's atmosphere by volume. Six, and muscular tube in the human body which connects the throat to the stomach. Ten, there we are. Paul and Rachel will go first. Organ, 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 oxygen and then esophagus. What are we going to go for? Um, esophagus, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, we're going for the second one down. I think you say ohm. Ohm. Say Paul and Rachel for the SI unit of electrical resistance. Now then, Rob and Sam, over to you. Do you want to talk us through that board? Um, we think the top one's organism. Third one we're not entirely sure on. The burnt element we think is oxygen. But we're going to go for the bottom one in the hope that people don't like the spell. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Say esophagus. Esophagus. So we have ohm and we have esophagus. Paul and Rachel have gone for ohm. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that for the SI unit of resistance. That goes down to 46. Not bad. Meanwhile, Rob and Sam have gone for esophagus, the muscular tube in the human body. Let's see how many of our 100 people got esophagus. Esophagus is right. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Esophagus wins. Look at that. Dang it. Oh, 44. I knew this would be hard fought. And it means well done, Rob and Sam. You're back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Very well played. I once went to the ideal ohm exhibition at uh, Earl's Court. Fascinating, it if brilliant. you're interested in oh, ohms. I yeah. resisted that. Which, oh, very good. Uh, now, the, uh, you're quite right about organism. Would have scored 22 points. We'll leave the ear for the moment. Uh, Oxygen, you're right about that's the biggest scorer. Would have scored 59 points. Do you know this last one? Mm. It's one of those things I just looked at the answer and I remember it from school. I have been taught it. It's a lovely word. Mm. Mm. Ossicles. Oh. oh, that's oh, nice. That's nice. Ossicles. One point. Very well oh. done if you said ossicles. And if you didn't say ossicles, treat yourself now and say it. It's lovely. <laughs> ossicles. Ossicles. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Well, it comes down to a decider. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about... Ballets without dance, Richard. Yep, yeah, I'll show you the titles now are five classical ballets, but we've missed out all the letters of the word dance from their titles. Can you work out what these ballets are, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the ballets. Bring on the ballets. We have got... T-H-U-T-R-K-R, -R, Tchaikovsky. O-P-P-L-I, Delib. S W L K Tchaikovsky, I R L L Prokofiev, and S H H R Z Rimsky Korsakov. There we are. Now then, Rob and Sam will go first. Um, we're going to go for the fourth one down and say Cinderella. You're going to go for Cinderella for the fourth one down. Okay. Now then, Paul and Rachel. Can you talk us through that board? Uh, this is the Nutcracker, Swan uh, Lake. Um, yeah, I'm not <sighs> sure about the, the bottom one or the second one. Even to have a guess. 
I think I could pro maybe guess the cycle one, but I don't mm -hmm. know. Should we go to Nutcracker's one? Nutcracker. Like, uh, Nutcracker, the, the Nutcracker. OK, we're going to go for the Nutcracker. So we have Cinderella and we have the Nutcracker. Uh, Rob and Sam have gone for Cinderella. Let's see if that's right for the Prokofiev. It absolutely is. Cinderella. Oh, very well done. Down to five. Great answer there. Uh, Paul and Rachel, meanwhile, have gone for the Nutcracker. Let's see how many of our 100 have got that for one of the Tchaikovsky's. Nutcracker, absolutely right. Ah, 48 for the Nutcracker, and that means very well done indeed. Rob and Sam, after three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Great head-to-head, -head, everybody. Nicely played. Cinderella and the Nutcracker are our wrestling nicknames, aren't they? That's absolutely yeah. right, yes. Now, Swan Lake, you're quite right about would have scored you 82 as a big old score. How are you on these other two, I Mr Classic those. FM? Yeah. Uh, the Dalib? Capelia. Capelia. Well done. That would have scored 10. And the bottom one? Scheherazade. Scheherazade. And that would have scored 11. So Cinderella, mm -hmm. best answer on the board. Very well played. Thank you very much, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. It's Paul and Rachel. Do you know, it really doesn't matter, because we're going to see you next time. I mean, really, you've just walked the course. <laughs> You now know what to expect next time, and I hope we'll see you maybe there or maybe even going through to the final. Anyway, thank you very much, meanwhile, uh, Paul and Rachel. For Rob and Sam, though, it's time for the pointless final. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Rob and Sam. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. <laughs> well, 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 just one show. One show, straight through to the final. There's no arguing with that. I mean, it would seem of a piece with your performance so far for you to carry that jackpot home. Hopefully. We just need to have a subject that, you, uh, that you're comfortable with. What, what would you like to see come up? This end bit is all Rob, because I am <laughs> awful when it comes oh, to the end bit, so this is all on him. So what would you like? Anything. <laughs> Anything. Anything. The, the sort of stuff. The sort of stuff we Fo have. You know, football is obviously a go-to. He's um, always yeah. good with rugby teams. Geography yeah. is very good at. Lots of things. Well, this, this will be fun. I hope. I hope. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, as you say. Today's offering is... Darts. Mancunian things. The Roosevelt's. Acting knights. Wow. What do we think? Wow. <laughs> Not what we were expecting no. in any capacity at all. Right. <laughs> Literally the darts. We only there's like ten winners, one there, it was a whole thing. Mancunian things. It could be football, there could be a football question in that, but it could be bands. They might be saying about bands in there, but then that is all on me. Acting knights. Better be scraping for films then. That is right. So what do you want to do? Just go on darts. <laughs> I know nothing about darts, so, no. OK, we'll go for darts. Darts it is. OK, this is, like, my perfect category. Uh, we're looking for any of the following, please. We're looking for any of the founding players of the World Darts Council. That's the 16 players who left the BDO to form what became the PDC in 1992. We are looking for any female World Championship finalist, so anyone who's contested a BDO World Championship final, please, from uh, the first held in 2001 up to and including the 2020 tournament. That's the BDO Championship finals. Uh, or we're looking for members of the PDC Nine Dart Club. That's anyone who's ever scored a Nine Dart finish in a PDC official event up to August. 2020. So the founding members of the WDC, uh, female BDO World Championship finalists and members of that Nine Dark Club. Very best of luck. Thank you very much. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. I'm, I'm not even looking at the first two. <laughs> pointless. Um, I mean, there's all the obvious ones. You've got Phil Taylor. Michael Van Gerwen. Yeah. Raymond von, von Barneveld. Right. Is he obvious? Oh, well, yeah, but... Out of those three, right, carry on. I think John Part, potentially. Right. So you remember that one, because I've got to forget Hart. it. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know if Gerwin Price has yet. He's the current one, yeah? He's the current world champion, but I don't know if he's nodding to or not. So I'll go... Eric... Bristol, I want to say as well, okay. but I'm not quite sure. So John Part, Eric Bristol, and Dennis Priestley, maybe. That's fine. Let me check in. Yeah, yeah. I, I got him. Shall we stop there? Um, let's have your three answers. And are they all in the bottom? Yeah, category? yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, John Part. John Part. 
Eric Bristow, and almost Eric forgot. Bristow. And um, Dennis Priestley. And Dennis Priestley. Of those three, which is your best shot, do you think, at a pointless John answer? Part, if he even John played Part. the PVC. Let's pop him in third. Um, who's your least likely? Um, Dennis Priestley. Dennis Priestley, and then Eric Bristow goes in the middle. Yeah. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Dennis Priestley, Eric Bristow, John Part. Well, I mean, they look good on the board. They look good. As, as dark players <laughs> should, I suppose. Um, now... What would you do if you were to win that jackpot? If one of these turns out to be pointless, 2,500 quid, what would you like to do with it? It will be going into our Japan fund <gasps> when we go to Japan, yeah. Oh, for the tomato festival? For the, yes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, I know. Amazing. Oh, that'll be lovely. It will be. Well, let's hope. Fingers crossed. I think they look like great answers. Let's find out. In all three cases, we're looking for members of the PDC Nine Dark Club. Your first answer was Dennis Priestley. Let's find out if he's right. Let's find out if he's pointless. 2,500 pounds riding on this. Dennis Priestley, absolutely right. We just have to see how far down the column we get with him, because if he goes down to zero, you leave here with £2,500. We're in single figures. Still going down with Dennis Priestley, still going down. Shut up. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Look at that. Look at that. There he goes. indeed. Oh. And once again, you make it look so easy. He does, doesn't he? So easy. Congratulations, Dennis Priestley, Thank a pointless you. answer. You are taking home today's jackpot of £2,500. Thank you. Uh, I mean, sometimes a lucky category comes up. I've, there are 152 members of that Nine Dark Club. 144 of them are pointless answers. I mean, essentially, name a dark <laughs> player and you've got yourself a pointless answer uh, on that one. Your other answer, John Part, uh, was also a pointless answer. Oh. I mean, they're all, they're all pointless, essentially. Well, no, Eric Bisto's not. Bisto is, is he wasn't uh, in, in, in the PDC. But you could, you could have gone on naming darts players all, all week and their pointless answer, brilliantly done. It's gutting you're only here for one show, but I'm very glad we at least uh, served you that. Um, let's have a little look at those founding players, shall we? The World Darts Council. Uh, there's Warrener and Priestley, the pointless answer in that category as well. Warrener, also a pointless answer for the uh, the Nine Dark Club. Peter Everson, Rod Harrington, uh, Kevin Spielek, the only other pointless answer there. All the other ones scored points, all those other 16 um, players. Uh, now the FEMA World Championship finalists, Anastasia de Bromislova is a pointless answer. Francis Honsolar, Lorraine Winstanley, Rian Edwards, also Anne Kirk, Kareen Hammond and Mandy Solomon. I mean, everyone is a pointless answer. There's 152 answers. Look at the names on this board. Uh, the last two world champions there, Gerwin Price and uh, Peter Wright. I mean, there's four world champs there. Rob Cross as well, John Part. Everybody pointless apart from Phil Taylor, Michael Van Gerwen, Raymond Van Barnevelt, Gary Anderson, Adrian Lewis, and then very unlucky if you said Brendan Dolan, James Wade or Terry Jenkins, uh, another Welshman, because uh, uh, they would have scored points. But all the others, all 144 names, essentially every darts player you've ever heard of was a pointless answer and would have won you the money. But you're the ones who had to stand there. You had to do it in the 60 seconds, which is pretty tough. And you did a great job. Well played. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thanks once again to our winning players, Rob and Sam, who take away today's jackpot of £2,500. Fabulous. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>